It looks like we've had an accident in the field. A man has got his hand very badly stuck in the combine. Yeah. The operator is just about to call the emergency services. And uh, Dr. Jason has just arrived on scene to take control of the situation. Jason. Right, so he's making a call to emergency services. Uh, what do you think is the most important thing that he actually tells them? What do you think? So the, as the emergency call comes in, you get directed to a operator that is run by BT currently. All right, and they're going to ask you what service do you require. So what service do you think he requires? Come on. He's the ambulance, but he's also trapped. Yeah, so it doesn't matter which one you get through to, they'll, they'll, they'll push your call out regardless. So it's ambulance service first. So they will then ask you what? You'll be very frustrated in this call. Like, what, what are they going to ask you for? They're going to ask you where are you? So currently, there isn't, a, there isn't a technology available to actually tell you exactly where you are. All right? They're working on that at the moment. Soon they're going to have a little app that they're going to fire onto your mobile telephone, and then your mobile telephone is going to tell us where you are. Okay? That's coming in the new year. But at the moment, they're going to ask you roughly where you are. So they're going to ask what town land you're in, and hopefully, if you have a postcode. So the most important thing is a postcode down to that field where you came in from. You understand? Do you all know your air codes? Okay, if you don't know your air codes, you better get to know them pretty quickly because your air code will allow us to put it into these our phones and we can get directly to you with an air code. That's one of the most important things is where you are. All right? And then they're going to go through a series of questions for you. They're going to help you with a bit of first aid and then they're actually going to start dispatching the resources. Don't worry, as soon as they know where you are, townland wise, the ambulance, the fire, the guards, the Coast Guard if need be, are going to come towards you. All right? So, someone's trapped here. We'll get the um, first people together. So, fire service is just starting to arrive. And obviously, somebody's trapped in a machine. <laughs> So when the fire service arrives, their primary role is just to make sure everything is safe. Now, you will have all heard the mnemonic. If you can't remember it, go on to Grassmen, type in West Corecraft response, and you'll see our dark, dark mnemonic to help you remember what to do. So the first thing here Ronan and his crew are doing is they're going for D for disengage. They're looking at the safety aspect of this combine and how they can make the area safe. For Claire here is coming with the ambulance service to work. So the first thing they're going to do is D for disengage. So what's the most important thing to disengage at this point? Anybody? What do you want to get rid of? Disengage, what? What's the most obvious thing to do? To make sure the thing is turned off, isn't it? Alright, and then to keep it even safer, Right, so Ronan is just advising just to make double sure that's turned off. Alright? The next thing to do is to start disengaging anything that's going to move. So in the combine there, he's been rolled into the auger. Alright? So if that auger is moving while we try and get him out, what else is going to move on that combine? Anybody knows the combine? Tell me what else is going to move. The knife, okay? So for this demonstration, we put a bar over the knife just to keep it safe. But obviously, you're not going to have something nice like that. So disengage, and what they're discussing is what to do. So they could take the belts off there, but if you take one of those belts off, you're not necessarily going to disengage everything, are you? Because each belt turns a different thing. So there's the blade there. What is that thing in the top there that's picking up? Will that turn? Yeah, that will all turn unless you disengage it. So we're still on D for disengage. Claire there is just busy on the next part of mnemonic, which is A for analgesia, and she's going to give him a, a, an inhaled device. It's called a green whistle. It's just come out for all the paramedics. So it's very, very potent analgesia. 
So he's going to breathe through it, and he's going to get used to trying to breathe through it. It's extremely strong. It's an anesthetic gas. Unfortunately, we bought that in in the last year, and all of our paramedics now can give it, which is a great relief, all right? So it's really strong analgesia. But just back to D there. Ronan is just having a chat there with the owner of the machine and working out just making absolutely sure. So on these combines, like for example, that Arga is driven by a chain. So what they're going to do is just drop that thing with a spanner and they disconnect the chain. Is that disconnected? Okay. So that makes sure it doesn't move. To create a more stable platform now, the fire service are going to use chocks and they're going to chock up everything so nothing moves. We're going to get on top of the situation trying to work out what's going on. So D, disengage. The next one is A, analgesia, so that's starting to work now. Is the patient feeling better? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's in his own land now. He's, he's, he's busy singing and whatnot. Uh, he's not very good at singing, is he? Anyway, so he's busy breathing that gas. He's, he's happy out. Paramedics and advanced paramedics there are, are just busy getting some monitoring on. All of our advanced paramedic there, uh, she's just getting uh, intravenous access so that she can give some longer acting pain relief. So what is the R for in, in the dark mnemonic? Who can remember? Go on, shout it out. What is R for? Reversing. Sorry? Reversing. Reversing. Well done. R is for reverse. So that's what they're trying to get up to. So they're busy stabilizing the machine. They know what the plan is. Running over there is just chatting to everybody, he's just making sure that the plan's going to come together without things dropping, and they're going to reverse the mechanism. So they're going to reverse that arga, move it backwards. If you get drawn into the machine, if you reverse it, you're going to come out of the machine. So there's something I was reminded of yesterday, um, and that is, on these machines, you've got the ability on the more modern harvesters to actually reverse it in the cab, haven't you? Yeah? Don't. Think about it. If you hit reverse in the cab, the thing starts spinning the other way, everybody's just going to get sucked in the other way. Alright? So, remember right at the start, D is for disengage. You cut everything off. That chain is cut off, it's taken away. If you need to cut belts, you cut belts. You do what you need to do. You stabilize the machine. Okay? And you get ready. A is for analgesia. And then R is for reverse. So, at some point, now Ronan's going to come in there, he's going to brief the whole team as to exactly what's going to happen and how the person's going to come out. You'll notice they're not using cutting gear or jaws of life or anything of that. That's very good for motor vehicles, okay? Farm machinery, the great thing is it all comes apart, doesn't it? It comes apart for cleaning, it comes apart for servicing. We can generally take these things apart so you can get back to plowing in half an hour. It's not a bother, all right? Just give a bit of a wipe to the argument where it's been bleeding. It's okay. Um, you'll be back to things in a... No time. Just very simply get on top of it. Disengage. A for analgesia. Reverse the mechanism. So Ron is just making sure it can all happen nice and smoothly. And the last thing, there's a T. So we do worry about bleeding as you come out. Obviously, if your arms have been squashed, or your hands have been squashed, or your legs have been squashed, as it reverses out of the mechanism, it could start to bleed. So uh, Olive's just going to have a bit of a chat there. Yeah, there she's got a tourniquet in her hand. And this is one of the times where we put a tourniquet on the limb, cut off the blood supply for that time when it's coming out, just to make sure it doesn't just absolutely bleed out. All right? So we've got the Coast Guard uh, unit here as well. They can all start to come in. And what we've done, and what we had hoped for this, uh, this day, is to bring in the helicopter to evacuate the patient quickly to Cork University Hospital. Unfortunately, there's a big incident on the go in Nishbop and they needed three helicopters, so the helicopter is gone. Um, so the Coast Guard, what their role is here, is would be to walk the field and find a nice landing space somewhere safe for the casualty to be winched from or for the helicopter to land in. Obviously, it takes X length of time to drive to CUH from here. And uh, potentially, if you've been stuck in the machine, you might need an operation pretty quickly to reattach your blood vessels and to get things sorted. Um, but by helicopter, we can be over there in, in no time whatsoever, maybe six or seven minutes and we'll be over Cork Airport. So it's very fast if we take a helicopter. So everything is getting ready. <clears throat> this is 
pretty accurate in terms of description and, and, and what we're showing you today. You know, we're not rushing to get him out the machine. We're making sure he doesn't bleed out. We're making sure we're safe by disengaging. We're giving him good quality pain relief. He's absolutely happy out there, trust me. Analgesia. There's extra analgesia going in there with Olive here with the advanced paramedic. Then we, we're going to make a decision how to reverse it when everybody's ready. And Olive's got her tourniquet ready. She's going to probably put it on now before they start to reverse. All right, Olive, you're going to put that tourniquet on before they start reversing. Okay. And then it's reversed to bring the patient out. And it's really important. We're teaching all of you this because you know your machines. You know your tractors. You know your harvesters. You know your machines. We don't. You do. So this is very much a collaborative effort here to ourselves in the agricultural industry to actually work out how to get people out of machines that get stuck into. Right? Remember, you have the knowledge for that, and we need to work together to do this. We're not rushing, but we're being pretty quick and efficient, but we're not rushing and just yanking somebody out. Because you make an awful mess. Something gets dragged in the machine, you reverse it, you'll be very surprised that actually it's sometimes not that much damage is done. So Archie there for the fire service, he's sitting there taking a, a good old overview, making sure everybody's safe through this whole operation. Olive's taking charge there from the medical perspective. You know, getting everybody ready. Got our colleagues from the Coast Guard who are adding an extra pair of ha expert hands. Um, and they're going to just slide him out on that board. We're not worried about his, his spine or anything like that, but it just makes a nice, stable platform to bring him out. So when everybody's ready, Olive will give the signal, and on Archie's uh, guidance, we'll start reversing the mechanism. comes. That's actually sometimes the easy part. This is where we get worried about the chemistry where they deteriorate. And that's why we've got that tourniquet on prophylactically from the start. All right. Just to make sure that um, there's no major bleeding and anything like that. We can handle the rest of it from here pretty easily. So Olive's just doing a nice reassessment of the casualty and kind of taking it from there. So Derry there is just fixing his chain back on his combine so he can get back to work. And as you see, we haven't damaged the combine, everybody's happy, and we haven't damaged the limb anymore. Right. So um, we're happy to take some questions now. And uh, if anybody has any questions, do shout them out. Yep. Has anybody got a question for Dr. Jason? Simple question, Doctor. Are you called Dr. Lee Austin to file an accident? Uh, sadly, yes. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what we do about, um, at the moment, you know, we used to be pretty steady around 150 patients, 160 patients a year, and um, it just exploded in the last few years. We're up to about, on projection this year, we might be up to about 300 patients. Not all of them are, are farm accidents, but a great uh, percentage are. In general, is there anything you could suggest to the audience here today that could help prevent farm accidents? It, it's quite easy to just say, okay, just a little bit of cop on, um, it's a bit more complicated than that. I think my clear message that I want to get out to, out to everybody today is take a look at your farms, take a look at where you work, and then ask yourself the question, yes, you also live 
where you work. But then ask yourself, how can you separate out where you live from where you work? So make that farm yard far safer. You know, your family deserves to be safe. We know from statistics that it's more likely that it's your children that are getting injured or else it is your mum or your dad that's going to get injured or your grandparents are getting injured, okay? We know that statistically. So what I would say loud and clear to everybody here today, yeah, you've got your dark mnemonic, fine. But prevent accidents, please, 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 look at ways you can separate out where you live from where you work. Don't be driving the tractor into the yard. Keep your farm machinery separate. I know that it's done the way we've done it for many, many years, many, many generations. But it's time now just to think about separating out where you live from where you work. Anybody else? Any questions? I think you've been called on, so I... Are we okay? Yeah, Dr. Jason, thanks to you and your team for all you've done for us today. Thank you very much.